So the Small Business Administration recommends that companies $5 million and under from an annual revenue standpoint spend anywhere from 7 to 8% on their marketing spend annually. So for a company that earns a million dollars a year in revenue, this ends up being uh, $70,000 to $80,000 in uh, total you know, spend. Um, and if you divide that by 12, uh, I think it's roughly six to $7,000 a month. Um, so what do you do with that budget? Hi, I'm John Timmerman, and I cover the world's most exciting businesses so that both you and I can grow ours faster. And today we're going to talk about how the SBA recommends spending 7 to 8% of your annual revenue on marketing if you make $5 million or less. So let's get into it. So if you're a local company, you got to think of how you're going to generate business. It's mostly going to be from a local community. It's going to be from your local community, maybe some people traveling in. But if you're a restaurant, uh, if you're a service-based business, like maybe landscaping or, or something like that, think locally. First of all, what I would do is invest in invest maybe 2000 of those dollars into influencer marketing. Now, not the big influencer marketing where you're you know, targeting influencers with a million followers because their followers are from all over the place. Instead, find people with 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 followers that are posting mostly content about your local area. Maybe they're posting about rent restaurants that they visit. Maybe they're posting about vacations that they're going on. But they have a lot of followers. Um, they have one to 5,000 followers, and they have really good engagement. They have hundreds of people liking and um, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 pe people commenting on each of their posts. Now, you're probably going to want to look on Instagram, Facebook, possibly LinkedIn, even if you're a D2C company, even if you're a restaurant, possibly on LinkedIn, uh, and, and probably on Twitter. Those are probably the, the platforms that you're going to want to focus on from an influencer standpoint. Those are the most local, you know, localized platforms. Uh, TikTok's big, but, you know, from a local standpoint, it's a little bit trickier. So I would focus on those platforms, find the one to 5,000 followers with decent engagement, and then really truly bring them into your brand. So don't just say, hey, I'll give you 200 bucks to like post a picture about my photo, my, my product. That really won't work at scale. Instead, invite them into your restaurant. Let's say you have a restaurant. Invite them into your restaurant. Have them create a sandwich or create a, a pizza flavor, you know, add their toppings, and you name it after them. Let's say their name's Frank. You call it the Frank, right? Or Frank's, uh, you know, the sandwich, Frank's buns. Let's say it's a hot dog. I don't know. Right? Have them create it and then have them create content around the whole process of them helping you create it. Put it on the menu. They're going to promote it. Uh, you're going to promote it. You can collaborate. And this sort of feel-good outcome of that, the feel-good sort of emotion that comes from that partnership will sort of spread. Right, And word of mouth will spread. People will come in. Frank will talk about coming in to try his hot dog and all that kind of stuff. So this is, where, this is the way I would do influencer marketing. And I would duplicate that. Right, You don't want too many. You don't want hundreds of local influencers doing the same exact thing because it's not sustainable. You can't have a hundred influencer menu items. Instead, partner with five, right? Pick five of them and then rotate their special item as a monthly item. You know, maybe you feature two of them every month and you, you do it every other month, so you alternate. If you're more like a landscaping company, you can do something similar. Instead though, you offer them free landscaping. You find influencers that have good landscaping, they have a home, they have some sort of use of needing landscaping, and then you go out and you give them free landscaping and you have them document the process. You have them document why they wanted these flowers and why they wanted this type of mulch, and, and you document that whole process. You still pay them for their time and their followers, right? But you document that process, they share it on theirs, you share it on, on yours, and then you do that every month. You talk about over the course of the summer, how you're maintaining their lawn, how you're maintaining their flowers, and you sort of co-create content. So that's the first thing that I would do is local influencer marketing. And I would loop into that community management. So I would have somebody on your team or hire somebody. Really, you just need somebody sort of entry level that has good writing skills and understands a little bit of social media. And literally have them comment on all the local posts that they see across those platforms. All of them, whether it's somebody commenting about a restaurant that they like, an event they went to, a concert they went to, have them comment on a regular basis from your corporate handle. Something like, wow, I love 
Kenny Chesney, glad to see you went to his concert. Or I love pizza, that's a great restaurant. Constantly communicate because it gets your brand out there and it shows personality, it sort of humanizes your brand. So I would loop influencer marketing and community management into the first thing I would spend my money on and I would spend probably around two to three grand on that. The second thing that I would do is I would go to local events. I would go to um, markets, flea markets, uh, vegetable markets, food markets. I would go to those. I would go to festivals. I would go to business organizations, uh, events. Um, I would go to golf outings. I would go to as many of these events where there's a lot of people that are all talking about a particular thing, okay? Then I would literally just meet people and tell what I'm doing because the power of the reciprocation will kick in. So I'm at a golf tournament and after uh, the golf tournament's over and we're in the sort of dinner part of the, the post golf outing event, and I would talk to people and say, oh, John, what do you do? Oh, I founded a company and we're a restaurant, we're small, we sell these sandwiches, here's what we do. Um, you know, is that something you're interested in? I'd love for you to come in and try some of our sandwiches. The power of reciprocation kicks in. If you're a good pe person and a good conversationalist, they're gonna say, yeah. Oh yeah, I'll bring my family in too, or I'll bring my colleagues in, uh, we'll have lunch there. And the word of mouth will start to kick in. Okay, this is a great use of, um, you know, sort of local events and your ability to network. It's not scalable. You have to go to the events and you have to put in the time, but it truly works. I know this because I've done it to build some of my businesses. And the third thing, by the way, that would cost you $500 or less a month, depending on if you had to buy a booth or a table or something like that at a flea market. The third thing that I would do is invest in personal brand building as the owner. So hire a video videographer, photographer, writer even, right, a content creator, to follow you around and document your experiences, uh, document the events that you're going to, document the influencers that you're partnering with, document you're creating a sandwich with the influencer, document that whole process and create little bits of micro content that you can share on your personal social media across LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, uh, and even into TikTok, now that we're getting into personal brand. Uh, because people trust people more than they trust brands. So if they see you across these platforms doing cool stuff with your business, they're gonna follow you and they're gonna be engaged in what you're doing. And from a local standpoint, the people that follow you are going to eventually want to try the thing. They're gonna to wanna to try the influencer sandwich. They're gonna to wanna to try to go to the event that you're going to. They're gonna to wanna to meet you. So this personal brand building will also lead to increased business. So those are the top three things that I would spend my five, six to $7,000 a month on from a marketing standpoint. Of course, there's other ways to do it, but those are the top three things that I would start with. If you found this valuable, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel to where I put all these kind of uh, tidbits about marketing and case studies about other companies doing cool things. Um, what I do is I cover the most exciting, world's most exciting businesses uh, so that you and I can grow ours even faster. Subscribe, like, and if you need help with your marketing, check out my agency, Good Monster. This is the kind of stuff we do every day to help businesses grow.